Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theater's manager at the Adler Planetarium. You're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, the anticipation is building for an event that hasn't been seen in the Chicagoland area in over three years, a total lunar eclipse. The last one of these that we got to see from here was all the way back in January of 2019. And of course, then it was bitterly cold and not particularly clear. This time around, we are hoping for some nice May weather and clear skies, but of course we can't plan on either of those. All we can do is hope for the best and plan ahead, so let's get to it. May's full moon is called the Flower Moon, and this one promises to be quite colorful. On the evening of May 15th, the moon will slowly enter Earth's shadow, and over the course of about an hour, you'll see it fall deeper and deeper into the dark. Then the total eclipse begins, and instead of the moon disappearing, you'll see a deep orange or red-colored moon as the sun's light gets scattered as it passes through Earth's atmosphere and then shines onto the moon. This total phase lasts for almost an hour and a half, and after that, the moon begins to exit the darkest part of Earth's shadow, and the partial phase ends almost three and a half hours after it all began. So, will you be able to see it where you live? Well, that brings me to one of my favorite things about lunar eclipses. They're visible from such a huge area. Basically, if the moon is in your sky while the eclipse is happening, you're going to be able to see it at the same time as about half the world looking up at that same eclipsed moon. That's a huge difference from solar eclipses, where totality is only visible from a narrow path on the Earth's surface, and you most likely need to chase a total solar eclipse to see one in your lifetime. With lunar eclipses, you almost likely have a chance to see one from where you live every few years or so. And the timings are easy to figure out, too. In Chicago, the total eclipse lasts from about 10.30 p.m. to just before midnight on May 15th. And for timings in your time zone, if it's different, you can just adjust accordingly. For the eastern U.S., eastern Canada, most of Mexico, and all of the Caribbean, Central, and South America, the entire eclipse will be visible from beginning to end, weather permitting. For Western Europe and Western Africa, the moon will set while eclipsed. And for the Western U.S., the moon will rise mid-eclipse and end at a more reasonable time of night. Another reason why lunar eclipses are awesome is you don't need any special optical aid to see them. No telescope, no binoculars, no special glasses, nothing. As long as your sky is clear and you're standing in a spot where you can see the moon, you can spot it, even from a light-polluted city. Another great feature, lunar eclipses happen very slowly. It's not a blink-and-you'll-miss-it kind of event like a solar eclipse. The partial phases unfold over an hour, and the total phase for this eclipse is almost 90 minutes long. There's always something new to see during the eclipse, as subtle shifts in brightness and coloration occur during the total phase, but you can absolutely check in on the eclipse, go to something else for a while, and then come back to see how it's going. And while the total phase understandably gets the most hype, there are some notable features to look for during the partial phase, too. You'll be able to see the curvature of the Earth's round shape, and even be able to tell the moon is passing through the lower section of Earth's shadow during the eclipse. You'll also see the shadow isn't a sharp edge, but blurry. The reason is that the sun is a disk in our sky, it's not a point of light. If it were a point of light, Earth's shadow would extend back in two lines with sharp edges. Because the sun is a disk, the edge of the shadow is fuzzy, and Earth's shadow has two distinct parts, the inner umbra and the outer penumbra. An eclipse is only partial if part of the moon enters Earth's umbra, and only total if the entire moon is inside the umbra. You can see this softening of shadows yourself if you go outside on a sunny day. Notice how all the shadows have soft edges. The darkest part of the shadow is the umbra, and the lighter part is the penumbra. Back inside, you can use a small light source, like an LED flashlight, to show a sharp shadow with very little fuzziness. Now, if you're a bit of a shutterbug like me, you might be wondering, how can I get a good image of this lunar eclipse? A good DSLR or mirrorless camera with a telephoto lens on a tripod is probably going to be the best way to go. You certainly don't need a lot of focal length to capture some good imagery. If you do have a telescope already, you could consider attaching your camera to it directly with no lens on the camera and using the telescope itself as the lens. Or you could use a smartphone adapter to attach that to the eyepiece and shoot some views of the moon through that. You might be surprised at what amazing views you can get. And because the eclipse moves so slowly, you'll have plenty of time to dial in some good settings for your setup and try and get a great shot. 
While you're out there watching the lunar eclipse, don't forget to take some time to see what else the sky has to offer as well. In fact, you can refamiliarize yourself with the summer sky, which will be rising on the eastern half of the sky along with the moon during the eclipse. The bright reddish looking star to the lower left of the moon is Antares, the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. And more fully to the east, you'll see the three bright stars of the summer triangle, Deneb, Vega, and Altair. These three are just rising later in the night right now, but as we get into summer, they're going to be up earlier and earlier and eventually be high overhead as the sun goes down in August. So I hope you get a chance to get out there and see this lunar eclipse on May 15th. Lunar eclipses aren't particularly rare, but each one's just a little bit different and a special chance to get out there and see this celestial treat in the sky. So I've certainly got my fingers crossed for warm weather and clear skies, and we can all look up together at this amazing view. Well, that's what I've got for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.